fucking brakes look like fucking dragons. Your car's a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Fuck it, come on. Piece of shit. See what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking Brooklyn and not a license plate frame. You dick. <laughs> you really? Yeah. Do you want a new one, Rich? It's cracked right there. Aw, oh, eat little, you dingus. Want me to buy you a new one, Rich? No, I don't. I'll buy you a new one. No. We got two. We got one here and one there. Filming. Well, then shut yeah. up. Eli, shush. shush. Filming? Yeah. Alright, what's going on, YouTube? Mike from our own custom shop. And uh, tonight we're going to be diagnosing. Uh, currently, uh, well, I'll go back a little bit. So the other day, Richard went to go drive the car to my house and he noticed he had coolant on the windshield. Unbeknownst to him, uh, this will be in another video, his uh, upper radiator hose burst and he didn't know that at the time and he drove the car like a solid 10-15 minutes in city traffic. So obviously the car overheated and now the car won't start, I mean it'll start but it won't stay idling and the coolant's got a real bad exhaust smell so it could more than likely has a bad head gasket at this point, but we're gonna have to diagnose it properly to make sure. And if he does, it's probably gonna end up needing a motor because there's very little chance that the head didn't get cracked. So what we're doing right now is we're just removing the valve cover so we could do a cylinder leak down test, which will verify if the cylinders can actually hold compression. And if they can't, well, then you might get a problem. Yeah, you can pick up these uh, cylinder leak down testers for forty-four dollars at Harbor Freight. Um, it's, oh, yeah. it's a um, it's a pretty simple test to do. It's pretty similar to doing a compression test. You basically screw it. You remove your spark plugs. You put this into the spark plug hole, and whichever cylinder you're testing, it's got to be at um, top dead center of the compression stroke, meaning that neither of the valves can be open. So that's why you have to remove the valve cover to make sure that you're at top dead center of the compression stroke. What are you doing now? So you can pull the pack out. You don't have to. Oh. Right. I've done this so many times, I don't fucking remember anymore. This guy's your time, 10 millimeters. What are you doing? Episode. Just get a spoon and keep it in the garage just for you and all these damn applesauce. Make sure to throw that away. You don't way. fucking throw it out. I'm gonna fucking take it with me, and if I see you rolling around Bethel, which I do quite frequently, I'm gonna fucking throw it through your window. <laughs> Swear to God. And it goes in the inside garbage by the laundry. It's pretty threatening. Yeah, it should be. Cause you never fucking throw them out. That's entirely dead. I just can't loosen stuff. <sighs> Mike takes us apart. We'll just skip ahead till we end up being apart. There we go. You're a fucking jackass. Okay. One more time. belt's also pretty fucking loose. It wasn't. Last time we checked it, but yeah, that's not good. Anyway, your engine might have jumped timing. You remember what Rodnick's car was doing? That's a possibility too, but anyway. In your case, I don't know if that's... I don't know. Any, either way. Okay, so what we're doing is I got a socket and ratchet on the crank pulley so I could turn the engine over by hand so we can get each individual cylinder to top dead center of the compression stroke which means that neither the intake or the exhaust valves are open so right now if you take a look at the cam the cam lobes they're not pushing down on the cam followers which means the valve is closed on both the intake and the exhaust side so once you have that on the cylinder you want to test, we're going to start with cylinder number one. Uh, we also got to take out the spark plugs. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, simple. I think I have a, I've got a spark plug socket in my car. I know, but I got a nice. But anyway.
That's not good. That's a head gasket. Oh, you damn well know it is. <laughs> Just do that again real quick. Oh, let me decrease the pressure. Holy <laughs> shit! I, I just want to witness that. Again. <laughs> yeah, I know I didn't catch you. Back your camera up a little bit. Yeah, you might want to. I'm not going to go full force with it, but. You might have to do that again like you just did. Your camera didn't get that. No, it didn't. Alright, guys, so we just tested cylinder number one. Um. It seemed like it had pretty bad leakage, but we couldn't tell if it was just because something wasn't set up properly. So we tested cylinder number four, which on a four cylinder engine, usually it fires at the same time as cylinder number one. So, um, yeah, watch what happens when we connect the uh, shop air to uh, cylinder number four. It was better the first time. The first time it literally shot the geyser. Yeah. Um, <sighs> there should be no way unless you have a severely blown head gasket for if you're pressurizing your combustion chamber for coolant to come out of your radiator. Yeah. So the Miata It's a it's a different kind of broken boosted, isn't it? Hashtag car passion channel. Yeah. Hashtag car fashion channel. So this is what happens Let's when that's the problem, child. Oh it's yeah. Because uh, if cylinder four is that bad, you know cylinder three is going to be. A problem. Cylinder three has always been the issue in this car. It always has the lowest compression. And you like you want to put that spark plug back in. It doesn't have to be tightened up. Just put it back. In. So we've pretty much established that the Miata engine is toast. Um, either the head gasket shot or the. Cylinder head's cracked. Either way, it's not really worth rebuilding. Um, I'll probably figure out something to do with it. Either we part it out, might, might get an NB. But in the meantime, I got myself a new car and I'm very happy with it. And that'll be coming up in a, another video very soon. Ain't that right, Eli? Yes, sir. Got clouds, bro? But, um, yeah. A ten dollar hose essentially killed my little boosted Miata. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't in the best shape to begin with, but that certainly didn't help. Um, so for a little while it's going to be sitting in this, this current state and then we'll rip it apart and decide to rebuild or do something different. So, thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more. Just not much more of a loaded me out of I waste this pan. Oh well. Thanks for watching guys. Look, mama, I made it to Forbes.